Hello. Oh, this is Reverend Don Lewis coming to you from beautiful Florida. And tonight we have a class in palmistry. And I'm sure that everyone has heard of palmistry. It's, it's um, very widely known. It's a very ancient art. Palmistry was practiced in the ancient Greco-Roman world. It has been practiced uh, in India for centuries. Uh, and there are at least two distinct schools of palmistry, the Western school that comes down from Greece and Rome and the Eastern school that comes down from India. And there's also something called body psychometry, which often takes the form of palmistry, but merely reads the lines in a clairvoyant manner um, with the person um, saying what they get from them psychically, as opposed to reading the lines. Tonight, we're gonna to be talking about the Western form of palmistry, uh, which is the one that most people in the Western world are familiar with. And I have made this handy chart uh, to guide us through our evening. And uh, as you can see, it shows a kindergarten idea of a, of a turkey, otherwise known as the human hand and all of the different um, symbolic divisions of the hand. And here's an example of a hand. As you can see, there are four fingers. This is standard, uh, standard issue hand. And um, occasionally they do come with extra digits. Palmistry doesn't have much to say about that. Sometimes they come with fewer digits, in which case palmistry might have something to say about that. And I think I'll start there. Uh, I am of the point of view that Uh, generally speaking, um, injuries to the hand, scars, uh, loss of a finger, etc., do have a meaning in palmistry. You would go ahead and read um, that which has happened, even though the person was not born that way. Part of the reason for this is that the hand changes constantly, and this is just another kind of change. So, for example, you can see I have a Band-Aid on uh, my index finger, and in palmistry, this uh, well, this, this is covering a, um, a, 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 a sore spot. And in palmistry, the fact that it is at exactly that place would have a meaning. Uh, we're not going to go into quite that level of detail, but we, we will uh, talk about what the finger means in just a moment. Every part of the hand has a meaning. And if we look back at our chart, you'll notice, if you're familiar with astrology, that the planetary symbols are all over, all over this chart. And the different regions of the hand are regarded as being ruled by the different Ptolemaic planets. That is the seven traditional planets that you find um, in pre-modern astrology and throughout, um, throughout, throughout ma many different magical disciplines. And um, if you're watching the class later, uh, we are having a number of people entering. Uh, and so uh, if I pause here and there, it's because I'm letting someone in. And welcome everyone who has, uh, who has recently joined. And we, um, we will take questions later in the class if anyone has any. So this is the hand. And uh, you will notice again that each finger has a planetary sign. The thumb is related to Venus, the forefinger to Jupiter, the middle finger to Saturn, the third finger to the sun, although it's often referred to as Apollo in palmistry and the final finger to Mercury. And each of these has a meaning. And the shape of the fingers, um, whether they bend toward one another or away from one another, uh, these all ha have meanings in palmistry. And um, the thumb has to do, again, with Venus, and therefore also um, with issues of self-indulgence, self-control, and focus. Um, and the top part of the thumb has to do with willpower. The bottom part of the thumb has to do with logic or reasoning. And how flexible the thumb is represents how flexible the person is. And um, some thumbs are very flexible, some are not. Um, some bend back much farther than mine. And this actually says a lot about the person, palmistically speaking, in terms of how they relate to the world and their adaptability, their flexibility, their willpower. Um, the Jupiter finger has to do uh, with governance, both self-governance and also um, how the person uh, 
approaches situations that they are in control of. Uh, if the Jupiter finger is particularly strong in a person, it might suggest that they would have a career in, uh, for example, the law or religion or other institutions. The Saturn finger has to do with lessons and learning. Uh, it can also indicate uh, a tendency toward depression. Uh, it can uh, also indicate a very strong influence uh, of fate in the person's life. The Apollo finger is self-expression and also any of the art. If the Apollo finger is likely to be prominent in uh, the arts, or perhaps we should say the arts will be prominent in the person. And the Mercury finger has to do with communication, but also with business and money. And um, but I think usually you'll find it more aspected for communication. If you look at my hand, you'll notice my mercury finger stands well apart from the others and is comparatively long and communication is a lot of what I do. And uh, so it shows in the palm. And um, it's important to say that the palm does change over time. When I was younger, um, the Jupiter finger inclined more, more strongly toward the Saturn finger on my hand. It, it tended to bend that way. It doesn't really now, it's changed. Um, if you are a devotee of palmism, uh, having your palm read every six months or so is a good idea because it can change just that fast. And um, the lines in the palm, on one hand, they're kind of the same for everyone, but they're very, very different. And you know, a newborn baby can have all kinds of lines in their palm and an elderly person can have just a few. And it entirely depends on the person. Having a lot of lines in the palm indicates a lot of um, mental and emotional activity and a lot of things happening in the life. Having just a few strongly incised lines uh, tends to suggest uh, a very focused life without a lot of side issues going on. Uh, the two hands are not the same. If you were to do a palm reading for your left hand and your right hand, they would not line up exactly for most people. And part of the reason for this, the left hand is usually regarded as potential and the things that can come to the person where the right hand is regarded as what has come to the person, or in other words, potential and present. And both of these can and do change. As I was saying earlier, I think when a person sustains an injury to their hand, depending on what it is, um, but uh, for example, a, a small cut or something, where it is on the hand does have significance in a palmistic sense. Uh, similarly, if there are uh, birthmarks or moles on the hand, where they are is something you can read in terms of palmism and will have a meaning. Um, each of the different aspects um, the different, different parts of the finger has a meaning. We're not going to go into that level of detail tonight, but one can. Um, I generally don't find it necessary, but they can. The shape of the fingertips has a meaning. My uh, fingertips are what are called spatulate, most of them. Um, and that has to do with practicality. But you'll notice that they're not all the same shape. Uh, the uh, the forefinger is more of a rounded tip as opposed to the others that are more spatulate. And this, uh, this too can be important in palmistry, but isn't usually what most people are looking at. Most people are actually looking at the palm when they think of palmistry. And um, let's bring back our chart and talk about what is in the palm. And the most important, um, most important thing, generally speaking, are the lines, and then after the lines, the so-called mounds, which are the regions of palm. Most people are familiar with the lifeline. Most people do not understand how most palmists would read it, however. Uh, the lifeline has to do with the uh, conditions of the life, not necessarily the length. Now, there are some palmists who do read it in terms of length. I am not one of them. Um, if a palm has an unusually long lifeline, it could mean a long life. It could also just mean a very eventful life. Uh, having said that, um, I have found that they do somewhat tend, in my experience, to correspond um, to the length of life that you might interpret if you were going that way. My mother, for example, had a lifeline that um, 
ended right about here, which would be around the age of 60, which is, uh, she was 62 when she passed. Uh, so it can be read that way, but I think generally it's better to read it in terms of the activity level in the life. Uh, if you could see my poem, you would notice that I have um, a circle here in my um, lifeline. And some people have a lot of them, some people have none of them. That tends to indicate a period of bad health. And uh, as you can see, this is very early in my life. And earlier in my life, I did have some serious health problems. Um, lines in the palm can be very sharp, or they can be chained, where they appear to be um, almost knitted from smaller lines. And this has to do with um, the person's approach to life and how much, for want of a better way, word for it, how much they ruminate about things. When the lines are chained, uh, it means that the person tends to um, tends to dither, tends, tends to chew on themselves. When they're not, the person is more straightforward. Uh, some people will have palms covered in lines, and mine tends to be that way. Um, no matter what the age of the person, some people will have, again, very few. Um, lifeline goes here, and then the next line um, is the headline, and I'm sure, well, back to the chart, uh, headline and the heart line, and the heart line is over the headline. And and of course, when we say headline, we're not referring to news stories, we're referring to the line on the poem. But uh, the heart line is over the headline and the attitude has been that the, um, the sensibility uh, should rule the mind rather than the mind overruling the sensibility. And the, um, the headline often will go entirely across the palm uh, the heart line does not necessarily, but it, it does in some people. In my case, you can see it comes right up here, does not come all the way out to the end of the, line, of the hand. Um, but that's a very individual thing. And um, the relative space between them, the strength of the individual lines, whether they do go all the way across the palm, uh, if they don't where they end, all of these have meanings. And those meanings in a lot of ways have to do with the mounds, which we'll be discussing in a few minutes and with the other principles we've been discussing, like whether the lines are chained or, or clear, et cetera. Um, then we have this line here, which I guess you can kind of see it. And this line is called the fate line. And it comes here from the Saturn finger. And if you remember, I mentioned Saturn finger has to do with fate. And the line that comes up to it also does. And you'll notice mine starts right here, um, roughly, roughly around the age of 30, or I would take it for around the age of 30, um, maybe a little more, and, and, and then goes straight up to the Saturn finger. Uh, some people, they'll, they'll start much lower. Uh, this, uh, I would say, indicates changes that occurred in my life around that time uh, that greatly accelerated everything that I was doing. Here, we see the fame line. And the fame line is just what it sounds like. And uh, it's also sometimes called the sun line. And it has to do with how well known a person will be in their particular field, um, if at all. Not everyone even has one. And some people have very strongly marked ones. And you can see mine is fairly strongly marked at this point, particularly here at the top, which um, indica indicates later in life. And then um, over here is the money line, which is just what it sounds like, uh, the level of prosperity a person will experience. And again, these lines change regularly, uh, particularly on the right hand. And here, on the outside of the mound of Mercury uh, is the marriage line or marriage lines. However, um, I really don't like calling them marriage lines. I think relationship lines might be more appropriate. And um, some people have a lot of them, obviously. Some people have just a few of them. Some people don't have any. But they tend to speak not necessarily um, 
to an exact number of relationships a person might have, but to the importance of certain relationships and their strength uh, in the life and the extent to which that line is sharply incised or mildly incised speaks to the strength of the relationship. The length of the line speaks to the length of the relationship and where it appears uh, in this little area here tends to speak to what part of the life the relationship begins in. And um, again, traditionally they were viewed as marriage lines. I think that's a little limiting today. And those are the major lines in the poem. Now there are also minor lines. We're not going to go into those tonight because we do, we do have only a limited period of time, but those are the major lines. Now let's talk about the mounds. And um, the most obvious mound is right here. It's the mound of Venus. And it has to do um, with the person's relationship to romance, also to sensuality, also to self-control or lack thereof. And um, a strong, well-developed one uh, tends to indicate a person who um, has a strong feeling for romantic things. Over here, we have the mound of the moon. The mound of the moon has to do with imagination. And when the mound of the moon is strongly developed, the person has a strong imagination. Um, the center part of the hand is dedicated to Mars. And over here toward the, uh, the thumb are the positive aspects of Mars. Uh, courage, um, making new beginnings, trailblazing. And over here uh, toward the outside of the hand are the more negative aspects of Mars, such as anger, conflict, et cetera. And the kind of lines that you might find here and uh, whether the mound is strongly developed or not, speak to those qualities. And then these mounds here at the top of the hand correspond to the fingers. So we have the mound of Jupiter, the mound of Saturn, uh, the mound of the sun or the mound of Apollo and the mound of Mercury. And um, they are differently developed in different people, sometimes more, sometimes less. They may be uh, crossed by one of the lines that, that, that um, we've just talked about. And um, there are a number of different things that you can find in them. And if you look at, um, if you look at my hand, I would say that you, you would find that the, the uh, mound of Saturn, which has to do again with fate is very, pretty strongly developed. And the mound of Jupiter, which often has to do with religious matters, uh, also legal matters, et cetera, strongly developed and how a person uh, deals with organization. And um, over here we have fairly, fairly well-developed mound of Mercury and mound of the sun. Uh, although the uh, line of the sun is very strongly incised there. So these are, um, these are the main parts of palmistry. Now, uh, also, if we go down the uh, arm, you will notice here, many people will have rings at this part of their uh, hand. Uh, they may be strongly incised, they may be chained, they may be absent. Uh, these traditionally were regarded as having to do with the delicacy or strength of a person's health. Um, a person who had a lot of lines here probably had a delicate health. A person who had none was probably pre pretty, pretty healthy. And a person who just had um, a, a little bit of lining here was average. So these are um, the primary lines. When you do a palm reading for a person, um, again, there is something called body psychometry or, or skin psychometry, where the person will look at the palm, but actually read it clairvoyantly, which is different from what we're talking about. When you're doing this sort of palmistry, you have to look at the person's hands. You have to be in light where you can see the lines. And sometimes you need, you need to, um, to stroke the hand a little bit to bring them out, depending on the person's hand. Um, everyone's hands are different. Some lines are absolutely impossible to miss. Others are quite light and you have to look closely or you're going to miss them. Um, and how flat a person's hand lays also has 
uh, an interpretation, the more that there is like a, a, a cupping in the center, uh, the more that person values their privacy. So uh, these are most of the individual parts of palmistry. And now if we have any questions, we can address those. Let's not all speak at once. No questions. There's I a do question. Have one. Yeah, it is. I'll try not to make it silly. Oh, wait, let me put my face well, on. That's so okay. Yeah. Um, so if you're doing a reading uh, during the psychic fair, can you do a palm reading over the over Zoom or like is that too hard to do? Um I would say it could be done. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out it if would you depend. can like yeah. Well, that, that's exactly the question. It would depend on the person's camera setup. As you were mm -hmm. holding your hand toward the camera, I think I think it could be clear enough. Um, yeah. But it, it would not be ideal the circumstance. Is, uh, the left is yeah, the left. Okay, and the right is kind of like current and past? Yeah. Uh, yeah, current, what, what, what you're actually manifesting versus what you could be manifesting. Gotcha. Uh, and that Very can be either good or bad what could be manifested. Mm -hmm. So things may be in your left hand that don't show up in the right, and that can be both good and bad. Some people yeah. feel that if you are left-handed, this reverses. I don't know that I agree with that, but some people do, and different palmists will have different points of view. Uh, I think mm -hmm. generally speaking, the person will be able to tell which one is which as they're read, <laughs> um, because one, one will be what is actually there, and the other will have more potential for them. Some people have brought all their potential through and their hands will match up pretty well. Some people, their hands will be drastically different because they have not acted on a lot of their potential. Yeah, my this left hand has got lots and lots of lines and this right hand has not got lots and lots of lines. So that's interesting. That's um, a that's perfect much, example. Lots of potential, but unrealized, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we gotta get more lines in your right hand for you. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting. We're going to have to talk about her in a person reading then. Yeah. Um, as you can see, you could, you'd have to look kind of closely to see my lines on, on, on this camera, but then I also have a lot of light in this room. Um, so yeah, doing yeah. a palmistry reading. Yeah, mine, by, my, some of mine are more like pronounced, I think. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. they're deeper. Mm hmm Okay. So it, it depends on the person. I wouldn't say that this is the best um, mm -hmm. format for palmistry, but what could be done, um, the lighting could be adjusted, which would help. But if the person had a scanner where they could scan their hand and right. send it to okay. the reader in advance, that would, that would be helpful. That, that's something that used to be done sometimes by palmists. Um, some palmists would even take an ink impression of the hand because it made all the lines much clearer on the paper. Um, uh -huh. Then you had to get the ink off your hands, but it was <laughs> it was it was helpful for the reading. Um, very very fascinating, very fascinating. And that you know there are some interesting stories of palmists out of history, and you know palmistry shows up in literature a great deal, but also it's shown up in, in uh, some historical situations. One of the more interesting ones uh, involves the Empress Eugenie. Um, I believe it's the Empress Eugenie, but she was um, a child um, and a, um, a palmist read her palm and told her that she would grow up to be a queen and li live for a hundred years. And you know, her mother must have thought, oh my goodness. What a ridiculous reading. But sure enough, she became Empress of France and uh, did live for nearly 100 years. And um, it's one of the more famous readings that, um, that um, have been preserved. Another interesting thing that I encountered, I, I used to know a woman named Rosemary Fletcher, who I would say is probably the best psychic I have personally known. And this woman could read anything and usually did. One of the things she had that I've never seen otherwise, she had a set of cards based on palmistry. And each of the cards highlighted a different line or mound 
uh, or other aspect of the hand. And um, so it didn't actually work with the person's own hand, but did work with the principles of palmistry, which I thought was very interesting. And as I say, I've never seen another person with that particular deck. Um, another thing you'll often see are palmistry hands that are made of porcelain or, uh, or other substances where all of these different things are marked on them. And this can be very helpful, uh, not necessarily for the reader who should know them, but for the client uh, to be able to see the things that are being read. And plus they're very decorative. And again, palmistry goes back to classical Greece at least. And it also goes way back in Indian history. And um, so it's certainly not a new art. And if you were to read treaties on um, treatises on palmistry from different centuries, you would probably find some variation uh, based on uh, things people were thinking at that time, but mostly it would hold, hold steady to where it is. If you look at ancient Roman artwork, uh, you will see palmistry hands uh, as one of the things that show up sometimes in antiquities. And you'll also see principles from palmistry show up in artwork. Uh, another thing about palmistry, there are different ways of interpreting fingers, uh, but one that uh, that I think ties fairly clo fairly closely to normal palmistry reading would have the first finger as the mother, the second finger as the father, the third finger as their union, and the fourth finger as the child. Um, and you see this in certain. Um, hand signs that are used, certain mudras that, um, that draw upon these principles. And of course, again, the first finger is Jupiter, second finger is Saturn, the third finger is the sun, final finger is Mercury, which could be taken as being, being those same qualities. Although uh, with, when, when we work with correspondence, there's a wide range of things we can do with it. Do we have any other questions? Not all at once, please. Wow, I must be explaining this well or else you're totally not getting it, one or the other. I'll choose to believe it's the former. Um, so I will show you my little chart one more time. Once again, this is a child's idea of what a turkey looks like. And um, you can see all the different lines we've talked about. Uh, because of the nature of the camera, it, it, it's mirrored, so it'd be a little hard to read it, but you can see, you can see the astrological signs. And these, these are the basic things that go into palmistry. There are some specialized lines that um, are beyond these that, that we're not going to go into tonight. Although, uh, if you have taken my course on palmistry, uh, we do talk in more detail about those smaller lines. And that is part of the second degree studies at witchschool.com. And it will be a standalone class coming um, hopefully before the end of the year, uh, reworked as a standalone class because only so many people have taken second degree. But um, palmistry can be a very, um, a very deep subject. It is, um, it is probably not the kind of reading that you want uh, in the middle of a global pandemic, because there has to be um, a certain proximity to the reader, unless you're doing it by Zoom with your hand in front of the camera. Um, but it, it also, for that reason, is um, a somewhat intimate form of, of reading uh, in, a, in, a, in a, um, an innocent sort of way, because chances are, um, the reader will, will be holding your hand, partly because those lines may need to be clarified. And you do that by rubbing. And as you do that, you can see they, they, they show a little more strongly. So uh, with those things, just what we've discussed here, you should be able to do a palmistry reading if you are so inclined. Um, and particularly if you're well-versed in the Ptolemaic planets. So we have, um, we've come to the half hour mark and I will ask one more time for questions. And uh, if not, we will have completed our class. 
and then we ha we have our movie in half an hour. Hi, Lord Don. It's Melinda. Hi, Melinda. Hi. Um, I have a quick question, and I'll probably have to um, watch the replay um, because okay. kids, you know. Yeah. But um, can you go over a little bit more about what the what the mounds are? Are they just more pronounced, sort of? Um, like I don't know the word I'm looking for. Well, they're they're regions in the hand. In some okay. people, they're very pronounced. You can see you can see them here. Right. And in me, that in me, they're very pronounced and rounded. That won't be true for every person, uh, although it tends to be fairly true. And if you uh, you squeeze your hand, you see they become even more pronounced. Okay, and so is it just the sections of the hand like that is sectioned yeah, they're the off sections. like the picture shows? Okay, exactly. Okay. Okay, I was looking for like bumps in my hand. <laughs> like, um, for some people, they will seem that way. For others, they will not. So it's the section. Okay. And when, so, when they're strongly developed as a rounded feature, like on mine, what that means is that they are they are highly aspected. Uh, when they're when they're flatter, they're less aspected. So, um, or maybe I should say, well developed. And so the things they represent are a little more in play. Oh, okay. So and I it's don't also know. relative to um, rel relative to um, what is normal as well, because you'll you'll notice uh, the amount of Venus is is very large here, but it tends to be larger on everyone's hand. Uh, that's just how hands are constructed. And palmistically speaking, that that would be because the emotional er area of our life is always one of our largest areas. Okay. Yeah, and yours, so, yours, you can you can see them. Okay, I'm like trying to. <laughs> okay, okay, cool. Yeah, I was I mean, trying to. You you have good 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 lighting for a palm reading. So, uh, yeah. Going back to Patty's question, yes, it, it can be done by Zoom. I do have a question. So mm -hmm. I believe this is my headline in between, um, in between there. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a there's it's like broken up at the end. It's sort of like splitting, like forking at the end mm -hmm. of the headline. Do you know what what that would mean? And also, there's like my lifeline has that. Um, oh yes, I see the thing in the lifeline. <laughs> yes, I'm like, uh, what does that mean? Now this is my left hand, so. Well, and that's potential. Okay. Um, if I'm seeing correctly, and it is a little hard to read on camera, yes. I, I believe there's a, a laguna in the in the lifeline, um, which also makes it appear to strongly shift. Uh, okay. That could indicate poor health at that point of your life. It could also indicate a situation in which you feel constrained. And coming out of that, your life will change very much. I would, I would guess from where it is, it's around the age of 50, give or take a little bit. So you may find a major change at that time after having felt stifled for a while. Okay. So when I'm looking at the lifeline, the this part it would be the beginning. That's the youth. Yes. And then the base would be okay. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Great. Thank you. You're very welcome. So yes, yes, we can do it by Zoom. And with the right kind of lighting, it will happen. <laughs> yes. That and the lighting just, is important. <laughs> yes, that was just actually my Haley was holding her flashlight from her phone for me because we we're watching oh, a family Halloween movie. Ooh. Yeah, Monster House. It's fun for the kids. Cartoons. Very cool. But, but thank you so much. Thank you. And do we have any other questions? If we have no other questions, I will thank you for having attended. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed the class, and um, and that will uh, that will conclude the class for us. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. Good night. Good night. And we have concluded.